Hello guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to make a tutorial where I'm going to teach you guys how to make a sidebar using React.js and I'm going to be modeling my sidebar to something similar to this. You can see right here, I'm not going to add this part over here or maybe we can, but the idea actually is to just make a simple sidebar where you can hover around each of these items and you can see that each one of them leads to a different link and you can see there's also icons on them. They have like a cool effect when you hover over them and each one of them have titles. Like it's, this is the basic idea of how our, our sidebar is going to, to be. So you can see here, I have a simple React application and let's start working with it. You can see I just opened up my application. I created the React, create React app uh, command and I can just like erase some stuff that we're not gonna use. For example, I'm gonna erase the test, the index.css, the logo and the setup tests down here. I'm going to delete all of this because we're not going to use them. Then I'm going to come here. I'm going to remove the index.css from the index.js. And this is probably it. And then I'm going to come here to my app.js and I'm just going to delete everything, including the logo at the top. So let's save this. You can see that now there's still errors, uh, meaning that um, there's some problem with the directory. Uh, let me see what happened. I'm going to restart my react app. So yarn start. And I feel like it should be working now. Let's see. Yeah, now it's working. You can see we have an empty website, which is definitely what we want. But we want to start by building our sidebar on the side. So in order to do that, we're going to come here to our app.js and I'm going to do it directly here. But the thing is, we're actually going to create a different component. When you're working on a project, you want to have a different component for, for example, if you want to build a nav bar, or if you want to build a, a sidebar, then you probably want to have a folder called components, which will include this. And let's create a component called sidebar.js. And I'm going to use the uh, ES7 uh, snippet command RFCE to create our functional component called sidebar. If you don't have this, I would recommend installing it. If you or if you don't want to install it, you can just write out what I just uh, created here. And inside of here is where we're actually going to be creating our sidebar. But since we're using a different component, I need to import this component on our app.js. So import sidebar from dot slash components slash sidebar. Now we have an instance of our component, you can come here to the bottom and just call the sidebar. And that should be fine. You can see that, for example, if you came here to sidebar and I wrote whatever and I saved it, uh, it should appear. It's appearing in the center because we currently have the CSS that already comes with a React tab. So we're going to delete all of this. So let's delete this because we're going to be working on a different one. And by the way, I'm going to be using app.css for the sidebar as well. So let me copy the import app.css. We want to have access to it. And you can see now it should be working. So we actually need to click two. Uh, two dots. So it's outside of the components folder. And now we have a simple sidebar component, which has an app.js, which is being called inside of the app.js. So we're also going to uh, initially, you can see stuff are centered because if you go here to app.css, it says text align center. Let's not do this. Let's delete this. And let's make this be equal to width of 100 VW and height of 100 VH. This is just so that you guys can see, this is basically setting the app component, which is the like the whole screen equal to 100% of the screen and 100% of the width, you can see that for example, if I came here and set background color, equal to uh, blue, uh, it's taking up uh, like a whole screen It's also taking up a bit because you can see when you start a react application, there's a bit of margin. So we're going to remove that margin by coming here and writing buddy. And we're going to say, margin equals zero. And we're also going to remove the padding because it might have some padding as well. Padding equals zero. You can see that now it removes and everything is fine. Let's remove the color. And inside of here, we want to have the sidebar. So let's come here and give this a class name of sidebar. And let me remove the text. Let's edit the sidebar over here. We want to grab the sidebar and say that the sidebar will be equal to we have a height of 100%. So it's going to be 100% of the of the height of our screen It's going to be filling up everything. And then we want to have a width of and in this case, you want to set it whatever you want, I'm going to make it like 300 pixels. And let's give it a background color. So we kind of have an idea. Let's make it aqua as well. 
You can see that now we have a sidebar. It's a bit too big. I'm going to change that. I'm going to make 250. And you can see now it's perfectly aligned in the left and it should be working. I'm, I don't want to grab this color. I honestly liked the color that is over here. So I'm just going to copy the color. And in order to do this, I have an extension called um, a color picker. I, you can just search color picker on your Chrome uh, website on your Chrome store and you'll find it. I can just hover over here and grab the color. It's copied to my clipboard. And now I'll come here and just say that the background color is equal to that color. So you can see now we have that color over here. But this is just creating the simple sidebar. Well, how do we actually create the different parts of the sidebar? So like the the different column, the different rows that we want, the different links that we want in our sidebar. Well, we're going to use a, uh, a file called sidebar data, we're going to create one called sidebar data. And sidebar data, you can call it whatever you want. But I call it sidebar data because it will basically be a file, which will be uh, an array of objects, which each ob object will contain three properties. The properties will be the title, the icon, and the link to where you whenever you click on the icon on the on the row, the link where it brings you to. So for example, if I click on this, it brings me to a page called layouts. So we want to put the link in that object. Why do we want to do this? Because we can then easily we don't need to actually write out a different like write out a different tag and a different component for each of these rows, we're going to do that automatically using uh, an array of objects. And if you're not getting what I'm saying, I'll show you guys more in depth right now. So basically, we're going to come here to our sidebar.js. And we can simply come here and import, we can just say RFC E. And you can see it says sidebar data. But instead of we're, we're not going to use func uh, the functional component, we're just going to export um, everything directly. So we can say export side export const sidebar data, and we're going to export an array. So we can come here and say equal to an array. Let me remove this right now. Because we're not going to re render anything, it's just going to be an array of objects. So let's create the first object. And we can start passing the properties of each of the columns so, of the rows. Sorry. So basically, as I mentioned, we want to have a title, we want to have a, a, an icon. And we also want to have a, like a, a link, right? So I'm gonna, for example, for now, I'll just put a random title. So like home, then I also want to put a, a random icon. And I'll show you guys what I mean by icon. Let's just create a, a tag called a component called icon. And I will I also want to pass a link. So let's say for example, I want to go to the home page. So this is the basic idea, right? We're going to have several of this things right here. And each of them are going to have different values. Now we're going to be working with the icon. So you might be asking, well, wh wh what do you mean by icon? So if we, there's something called a material icon, and I'm going to come right here material icon, uh, material UI, sorry. And it is a really awesome library. If we want to, to install material UI, you can see if we write here material UI, UI, uh, and yarn, for example, I want to install it, I can just click here on installation. And you, I, you can copy both of this. No, only one of this. Actually, if you're using npm, you can write npm install material UI core. And if you don't, you can if you're using yarn, you can just write this one, I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to write yarn add. But there's also you also need to add the the icons, um, the icons part of it. So you want to add yarn add, add material UI icons. And we just installed both of the packages. Now, this means that I can come here to material UI and I can get any of these icons and they have like 1000s of them. So they have like a 1000 and 117 icons that you can get and use in your project. So for example, let's imagine I want to get an icon for a home, we can come here, click on this, and they already have the import statement. Since you already installed, you can just grab this right here. And let's do that. We're going to grab this, we're going to come here to our thing over here, we're going to come to the top, we're going to import the home icon. And on this icon right here, I can just say home icon. This is what I mean by icon. And let's now create more. So we're going to have more, we're going to have like, I don't know, let's make uh, five, uh, five different rows, actually, let's make six, one of them is going to be home, the other one is going to be I don't know, let's see what what they have here. They have, 
lay mail let's say mail mailbox I don't know what this web website is going to be about but this is just like for presentation purposes now let's find find an, I an icon for mail you can just write here mail you can see that appears this one right here let's just copy and paste it over here now we can come here to the bottom and just say mail icon and I'm gonna fill out the other ones like with random stuff that I can think out of my mind and I'm gonna come back when I filled all of them and you can do it on your own as well you can create different columns if you want and I'll come back when I finish filling them out hey guys I'm back here and you can see I filled out all of them so we're gonna have one two three four five six different rows in our nav bar in our sidebar and I chose like random stuff I chose to create a row about home another one about mailbox as analytics dashboard friends and images those are the ones I chose and this is basically the idea of how you're gonna create each of the of the rows in your sidebar so now what we want to do is we want to use this in order to render different side different rows in our project so in order to do that we're gonna come here to the sidebar.js and up here we're gonna import the sidebar data so we're gonna come here and write const sidebar sidebar data and we want to import it from dot slash um, what happened oh for some reason I wrote const we, 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 we want to write import sidebar data from dot slash sidebar data and now that we have this we want to take use of it by basically we have a variable that is an array so we have this value right here which is an array of all of the different rows so we want to map through every element in that array and create a different row in our sidebar that is corresponding to that element so in order to do that we're going to come here to our sidebar we're going to write um, sidebar data dot map so dot map and we're going to grab the value the key and let's close this let's also close the thing over here and inside of this we're going to obviously create our our mapping function and inside of here is where we're actually going to create each of the rows so if you've worked with um, like mapping and array inside of uh, react before you know that this is how you do it you write a return statement and inside of here you can just add uh, the JSX or the HTML that is going to correspond to each element in that array so for example we want to come here and we want to create a, a list item right so it's gonna be a, a list item because each of this let's treat it like this things over here are all list items and the the thing that contains everything is a, an ordered list so in order to do that we want to create several different li list items and right above it I'm even gonna save this right before this we want to wrap everything around in a un uh, an ordered list so let's just do it like this we're gonna come here we're gonna do it like this okay so now that we have this we can simply come here to our to our part or our uh, list item and inside of here we want to give some stuff for example every time you map through an array in react you, you want to give a key so I want to give a key to this and this is just random you, you don't even need to do this but it just removes us uh, an irritating error message that it keeps appearing but we have to do this then we want to simply add some stuff for example I want to add the icon right so if we come here and we say we want to open up a div which is going to represent the icon you can come here and say vol dot icon and this icon is an element inside of sidebar data so we want to have the icon on the left and right next to it we want to have the uh, the actual like title so let's also create one for the title and div um, the title so we can come here and say vol dot title and right at the top over here we can have we want to do this in several different ways we can make this into a link we can make it into several other like you can you can make this into various different ways but since we are clicking on the thing and it sends us somewhere for example if I click on this it will send me some there somewhere I will simply come here and I'll make this um, give this an on click event and after the on click event I'm gonna basically pass a um, uh, an, an on, like a, a function which inside of here is going to redirect us to uh, whatever link we set so if I, if I come here and say window dot location dot href or path name actually if I come and say path name I can just set it equal to vol 
dot link. Where we're basically saying is whenever you click on this row, you want to change your location to the link that we set over here. If I click on the analytics one, I want to go to the analytics page. So that's the basic idea. So I want to save this. And you can see that now currently, this is what appears. You can see like everything is currently being listed, but we want to obviously edit it a bit. You can see it's looking pretty nice, but we actually want to change stuff. So it looks a little bit better. So that's what we're going to do right now. When it come here to our project, we want to give some uh, class names to our stuff. For example, the list, I want to make it equal to, uh, let me see, sidebar list. I also want to create a class name for each of the columns or each of the rows. And we can just come here and say class name uh, row, for example, each of these things are in a, are a different row. And now we can just come here to our app.css and we can access this kind of stuff. So sidebar list and we can make it equal to height of 100% and width of 100%. And let's take a look to see if it works. So if I came here and said background color of aqua, it takes up 100% of the screen. So let's remove this. And let's come here, we want to now come at the bottom and say sidebar list. And we want to access the row inside of it. So each of the columns, and each of the columns, we basically want to uh, make it so that they have they, they are divided on their own, right? So actually, the sidebar list, it doesn't need to be the full screen. It just needs to be the height in which, uh, to, like, until the bottom, right, until the last item. So we don't even need to make it 100%. We can just say auto, so auto, and we can also give a padding of zero, of zero, and that should be fine. You can see now everything is pulled out to the side, and now we can access the row, and we can make the row have a width of 100% a height of whatever we want to set, let's set the height equal to like something, I don't know, 50 pixels. And we can also give a background color. So you guys can kind of like see what we're doing, we want to grab the same background color as we have over here. So actually, they don't have any background color. That's funny. But I'll put a background color currently just so you guys can see about like kind of like the color, you can see that. Oh, I just realized that all of them has some, all of them are together. So you guys clearly can see it. So I'll just give it a border. So you guys can have an idea, one pixel solid and black, you can see that now everything is clearly divided, which is great for us. So now we want to give we're gonna come here to the bottom and give it a property of list style type. And we want to change this to none, so that we don't have any different um, aspects of a list in our in our list, which is actually a list, right? Right below it, we want to give a margin of zero. So margin zero. Also, we want to obviously give a display and the display we want to make it equal to flex. The reason why we want to make it equal to flex is because we, you can see that they are currently the icon and the text is currently on top of each other, we want to change the flex direction to row. So they are not next to each other. And I also, I'll change the color of stuff. So you guys can kind of clearly see what I'm talking about. You can see now the color is white, and it looks a little bit better. Then we also want to justify stuff to the center justify content center. And do we want to align item center? Let's try this. So align item center. And you can see now everything is centered, but this isn't exactly what we want. And I'll explain to you guys what why we're also going to change the font family. So let's let's choose a random font family, I'll choose this one because I usually use it. And you can see now stuff are looking better. And now what we want to do is we actually want to set a standard, you can see that like stuff are perfectly aligned. And we want to do that. So in order to do that, we're going to divide each each row into two parts, the icon part and the title part. So the first thing we want to do is we want to give them um, a different class name. So for example, for the icon, let's let's give this an ID. Actually, this ID will be uh, icon. And for the title, let's give an ID of a uh, title. So we're dividing the, the thing into two, we can come here to the bottom and say dot row. And we can say hashtag uh, icon, and the icon will be about flex of 30% of the screen, you want to make it 30% of the screen, remember that the, the row each row has a display of flex. So if we say flex 30%, we mean that we want the icon div 
to be 30% of our screen. If I save this, you'll see that now it pushes everything to the sides because we actually haven't set the size for the other part. So let's do the same for the other part. I'll say hashtag um, title, title, and let's set this to 70%. Now, if I save this, you can see it's now perfectly like aligned. And the great thing about this is we can just come here and say display, uh, let's make this grid and we're going to center it right at the center. So we can say place items center. And when we save this, this is perfectly centered in the middle of the 30% uh, part of the row, as you can see, and this is perfectly centered on the on the on the left. So that's great for us. Now what I want to do is I want to remove the the border that we created. And we want to do some stuff related to like styling, you can see that now it looks good, but we want to do some stuff like for example, I want to increase the, the height a bit, I want to make this 60. And I also want to add the hover effect just like this has where you hover stuff and it becomes a little bit, uh, you can see, like the even the color changes a bit. So in order to do that, we're going to come here to row, we're going to say uh, dot sidebar list dot row hover. So when you hover the row, you just want to first change the cursor to pointer so that we have the, the pointing finger when you hover the thing. We also want to change the background color. So the background color will become a little bit darker. So background color, and let's actually copy the background color that they have. So let's come here to our color picker. And let's grab this one right here. So this one right here. And now that we copied this, we can just come here and paste it over here. And, and now when we hover our things, you can see it gives us the cool effect that it was giving on the other website. So that's really cool. And you can see that currently when I click on something, it transfers us to the page that we wanted. So for example, I'm going to click on mailbox It's going to send us to mailbox, I'm, I'm going to click on home, it's going to send us to home. But one thing that is important is I guess you guys probably want to know uh, how to like, for example, when they when, when I'm in layouts, the layouts thing keeps itself um, like dark while the other ones aren't. Well, in order to do that, we need to keep track on what what is our path name. So let's come here. And for example, we can the path name is basically this over here, if we say window dot location dot path name, this is what we get. And for each of these items, we're setting the if we click on them, we're setting the window dot path the location dot path name equal to the link that we set. So what we can basically do is just ask to see if we the location that we currently are in is equal to the length to the link. So for example, if I come here to our row, I can give this an ID. And I'll give this ID basically uh, to be determined whether or not we are in the in in the path in a location which has the path name equal to our link. So we can just come here and say, if window dot location dot path name equals to vol dot link. So we're, this is a question we're asking if the for this item specifically, the win the link for it is equal to the, our current location, then we want to give this an ID of active. Else, we don't we want to give it an, an empty ID like nothing. So now we can just come here to our app.css and we can just say, well, the sidebar list dot row that has an, an ID of active, which is only going to be one of them. Well, that one can have a background color of dark. So when we save this, you can see one should only one of them should have it. But apparently they don't. Let's take a look to see why. So let me inspect my element. I'm going to take a look at Yeah, you can see that we're currently in home, right? So home has an ID of active. But for some reason, it's not accessing the ID. Let me see. Um, it's because we got to say active dot row because IDs come first. So if we come here and say, actually, let's not go for row, let's just say hashtag active, you can see that it will show the active If I go to dashboard, it will show dashboard if I go to analytics, it will show analytics. So this is a basic idea of how you create a really cool um, different like sidebar in react, I don't want to make this video too long, I think it's already pretty long. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and subscribe. I'm posting every single day, I'm putting out content that I hope you guys are enjoying. So I would really appreciate if you guys could leave a like and comment down below. Also tell me what you want to see, I can make more of this UI design types of videos, but I really also enjoy making back end videos. So let me know what you want to see. And and I'll probably respond. I'll definitely respond to your comment because I respond every single comment. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and I see you guys next time.